But I think the next you know, the stop is the 771 level. And the reason why I think these, these buyers were coming in aggressively for the 791. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the Access Trader.com nightly wrap-up show. Can't believe it's only Tuesday. Uh, I am uh, absolutely exhausted uh, in a good way, in a good way. Uh, but boy, oh boy, I, I can't believe I was, I was looking at charts uh, this afternoon. I, I can't believe it's only Tuesday. So anyway, guys, good morning, everybody. Well, good evening, everybody. I uh, hope everybody's doing well. So there was a couple of questions that uh, needed to be answered. Number one, we'll start from uh, the second part and we'll work our way up. So Johnson & Johnson, uh, you saw the headline this morning, and the headline read that the FDA is pausing um, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine because there were some uh, patients with uh, blood clots. Um, you know, not a good thing, obviously. Uh, you know, no vaccine is going to be perfect, and no matter which side of the aisle you kind of stand on, whether you're pro or uh, against the vaccine, it really kind of doesn't matter for the sake of this discussion. What matters is the vaccines are out there and people are getting vaccinated. And the knee-jerk reaction uh, to the first headline of a pause in the vaccine was, well, let's sell the market down. And right away, uh, the spies got hit. And the one thing that I realized very, very quickly, technology did. Okay, And we'll get to that. Uh, in a second as well. I think when cooler heads prevailed uh, this morning, people realized, and I tweeted this out around 7.30 in the morning, that number one, well, wait a minute, you know, Johnson Johnson is not the only game in town. Uh, there is the Moderna, right? Uh, there is the Pfizer, which I had my first dosage uh, two, two and a half weeks ago, and I'm getting my second dosage on Saturday, okay? Um, so people realized the first knee-jerk reaction was, well, wait a minute, we do have alternatives and everything is all good. And before we even noticed what was going on, bids came back into technology very, very fast, very aggressively. And if you look at the macro picture of the queues, there really wasn't a, a really big surprise that this, this dip got bought very, very quickly pre-market because, again, just from where we are technically. And if you guys notice, usually when good news comes out, it's usually built upon technical levels being confirmed, and that's kind of what we had here. The second question we had was, and we talked about this uh, last night in the video, we talked about this on the previous night in the video, well, was this market going to go too far, too fast, right? Were these gains so aggressive that the market you know, can't go higher on one linear level? Because again, even the biggest bulls on the wor in the world will kind of have a uh, kind of a pause if we go up too fast, you know, too far, too fast. And we're talking about that uh, 339 level on the NASDAQ 100. And the key question was today, not were the setups really good? Because we, again, we had a very, very big premium day. We'll talk about the pivots in a second. But the question was, well, how was the market going to handle that 339 level on the queues? And the great part about this particular bull run, and this has been a bull, really big, majestic bull run here for the last uh, seven days or so, seven and a half days, that not everything has, uh, has rallied. And we've kind of focused on the names that declared their validity by reclaiming the 50-day moving average. And if you've kind of watched every video just in the last week, and I keep on reiterating the point, stick to the ones that, again, reclaim the 50-day moving average. And it started with the cues. And you can see here, and again, I've been reiterating to the point that even if you're a novice trader in these first couple of years, and you're not big on technical analysis, just, just understand, repeat itself. You know, market repeats itself over and over again. You don't have to be creative when technical levels are being confirmed. And you see here the 50-day moving average going on a magical run. Then you had NVIDIA was the first of the beta names reclaiming the 50-day moving average, and it went on a big run. Uh, then Amazon reclaimed the 50-day moving average, and it went on a big run. Then you had Apple reclaiming the 50-day moving average and went on a big run. And then NOW from yesterday, right, 
reclaimed the 50-day moving average, went on a big run. So there's a lot of these names. But the great part about this, this rally for the last seven days is, again, they've been focusing. It's like almost like a, a broken record. But they've been focusing literally one beta name at a time, from uh, NVIDIA to Amazon to, uh, to Apple. And today was the mother of all. Well, I, I can't say the mother of all, at least the mother-in-law of all beta names. Amazon, I think, you know, has the greatest uh, upside of everything. But this one was number two. And if anybody's been following this broadcast for a long, long time, there was an area of Tesla that we've been talking about for a very, very long time. And if you trade Tesla, uh, like I trade, and again, yesterday's move were, were pretty good, caught a, you know, a couple of pivots yesterday on Tesla. But the big number we talked about always is the big picture, is the macro number. And it was this 720 level. Now, if you've been watching this broadcast for the last several months, we knew how many times it's gotten rejected off the 719, 720 level. And this morning, it gapped up to 708. It never went down, right? It just never went down pre-market with, um, with the whole Johnson & Johnson headline. And once it reclaimed that 720 level, right? This is it right here. Once it reclaimed the whole 720 level, Tesla just didn't have a downtick. It just really did not have a downtick. And I wish I can give you a little more enthusiasm. Um, I'm just exhausted, right? And it's the bottom line. And it was a great trade. I know a lot of you guys still have a big runners on this thing. And when you look at the option order flow over and over and over again, we saw the 790 calls the 820, these, these are all weeklies, right? We saw guys coming in with socks. It wasn't like, you know, traders were coming in with ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. They were coming in with two, three, four, five hundred thousand, a thousand million, uh, 700,000, all for the 790 weeklies, for the 800 weeklies, for the 820 weeklies. And I said today after the stock started really exploding, you know, just really didn't put in the downtick. I believe that first move was going to be to 771. I didn't think we were literally a stone throws away when the stock was at 730, 740. I was like, wow, you know, maybe tomorrow we could get see 771. This thing continued, closed at the high of the day, you know, a little bit of profit taken here after the close down a couple of points, which I mean, I, which I think it means absolutely nothing. But I think the next, you know, the stop is the 771 level. And the reason why I think these, these buyers were coming in aggressively for the 790, 800 calls, you know, once we get to start building above 772, here's the next supply zone. Uh, coming in 793. So the craziest part about it is as much as it reclaimed the 50-day moving average, it still has to reclaim this linear regression. If, if, if it does close above that 795, 800 level, whether it's next week, the week, whatever the case may be, then you have a, a moonshot, right? You have a legitimate moonshot all the way back uh, to the January 25th highs of 900 bucks. Again, we don't want to put the cart in front of the horse, but you know, going into tomorrow, any dip, you know, any dip on Tesla. Is it possible uh, you could have a rest day tomorrow on Tesla? Yeah. But I also believe if there is any dip tomorrow into the rising 60-minute support, shorts are going to get trapped. Okay, I'm telling you right now, shorts are going to get trapped on this thing on the rising 60-minute support. And Tesla, you know, once it goes red to green, it should go, it should go at least green once tomorrow, especially after this cartoonish like candle. Once this thing goes right to green, starts confirming this channel, you know, you should see a 771 test followed by a 793. So absolutely just monster. Congratulations, guys. I got incredible amounts of emails uh, after the close and during the middle of the day, and this and the other thing. So just amazing. Absolutely amazing. I was uh, very, very happy with the trade. It's, you know, so incredible job. The, the one stock that continued to bother me, right? And we'll get to the pivots today. There was some incredibly aggressive pivots and they're kind of really lining up for... Uh, big, uh, big confirmations for tomorrow. The one stock that is completely blowing my mind, and I and I tweeted about this, you know, maybe a half hour ago. I don't know what the hell is going on with Netflix, right? Netflix started off the whole last quarter uh, with really big earnings. They're coming out with earnings again on uh, on the twentieth, right? I think it was next week, April the twentieth. I just don't understand what the, this thing's waiting for, right? I'm waiting for this thing to confirm, just like with everything else. It keeps on coming to the top of the channel and just keeps on getting rejected. So I've been watching this thing literally. I've been watching this broadcast a lot last week. I've been literally watching Netflix every single day. And every single day at 4 o'clock, I'm like, well, what the hell is wrong with this thing? So maybe tomorrow, right? 
maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day, maybe the following day, I don't know, hell, maybe never. But the point is, can somebody nudge this damn thing and say, hey, look, there's a technology rally. Maybe you should consider making a move. So again, we're still watching this thing, but God almighty. Other than that, guys, let's talk about the pivots. Again, just a, a monster, monster move today. Uh, and a lot of these names, a lot of these names are still setting up for macro tomorrow. Uh, and again, if you look before we even get into that, if you look at the macro point of view, just a lot of indexes, again, the Russell is taking a breather, right? Uh, it's been kind of holding this rising support. Is there a little bit uh, cause of, you know, maybe some concern? I mean, listen, you know, it hasn't participated uh, when the other indexes are being pulled up. And again, I, I know I hear a lot of uh, traders in the Twitter sphere and the you know the whole social media world talking about how a lot of the small caps are uh, kind of taking a breather. I get it, right? When there's rotation out of one group goes into the other, I get it. Uh, but you know you have to watch this bottom level here. Who knows? You know this 218 gets violated uh, on the IWM again. Doesn't really need a reason uh, to kind of go lower. This is not really where my attention is, but this thing caught my eye. I always keep an eye on things. Uh, that are not rallying. Uh, other than that, the queues, uh, you know, closed at all time highs. You know, they you know, they went to that 339 level. They kissed it. They kissed it again. And they got through and closed at 52 week highs. So that's where we are right now. So uh, look, would it, would it shock me tomorrow if there's a day of rest, kind of, you know, kind of a little bit of profit taking just to kind of get a, get a breathe? Of course not. Right. Uh, nothing shocks me. But the point is, and I think a lot of you guys have realized this, you know, especially in the live webinar, you don't need to trade every day. But when you do get that, the king, the ace, the queen hand, it's very, very special. And we saw that today. So again, let's go through the, the you know, let's go through the pivots. Obviously, I'm still bullish uh, going into tomorrow. Obviously, the names uh, that are on my radar for tomorrow are still names that either closed uh, on the 50-day moving average, we're about to confirm it. So let's talk about it. Netflix, okay, maybe it's on. Uh, Tesla, right? 710, 719, just, just, you know, everybody saw what happened. This thing went absolutely nuts. This was definitely my trade of the day. Uh, it closed within a dollar of its high. It's just, a, you know, just a very casual $60 move on te Tesla. Phenomenal move. Uh, NVIDIA, congratulations for all you guys who caught NVIDIA. Big move yesterday. It opened up. Uh, it opened up a little bit lower. Once it reclaimed 615, I said there's a shot it could get into the 630 level, and da da da. da stock closed uh, at 628. It just an absolutely monster move on Nvidia. Roku looks great. It looks absolutely great. Uh, congratulations for you guys who took this pivot and are still holding it. First close over the 50 day. Remember the theme: 50 day moving average. 378 needs to build on Roku. Here was Roku today. Again, big technology rally. You see that closed all the way up uh, to the 390 level. First close uh, over the 50-day moving average. All it needs to do is just get one more obstacle above the supply zone. And this thing is off to the races. Uh, Roku went nuts. Uh, Dash I still like. Uh, didn't put up a big move. Not at all. It, it kind of started getting a little bit aggressive uh, towards the end of the day. But I still like it. This is still the second close. Above the supply zone here, if you know if it starts confirming this channel and an early volume comes in, why can't it uh, move to the 50-day moving average in the 158 area? So I still like it. I still definitely like it. Uh, UPWK, we talked about this uh, last night in the video. Again, not a beta name, okay, which is which is cool. And again, not every single thing uh, needs to be in the beta name. But again, it's the same common denominator, right? UPWK. Right, 49, it needs to build, right? Here's the 49, here's the 50-day moving average, right? Again, it took out 59, closed right at the high of the day in, in the 50s, right? If this thing starts getting above this uh, upper Bollinger Band tomorrow and confirming, you, there's more room. So again, for all you guys who are swinging it, great job, looks, still looks great. It, again, beta is just my drug of choice. It doesn't need to be yours. And a chart is a chart is a chart. It doesn't make a difference if it's a $2 stock confirming the 50-day or a $2,000 stock confirming the same level, you know, chances are not, you're still going to get the same, uh, the same results. Uh, GameStop continues to be a short. I mean, every single day, it just can't rally. Uh, experienced traders watch the green to red short. No, this is not a pivot, just momentum. 134 needs to build on the way down for more. And GameStop went red, right? It, it went red and went all the way down to the 132 level. At, at one point, look how weak this thing is. This thing is still, you know, if this market ever pulls back, 
This thing keeps on going, you know, giving three, four, five dollars a clip. But if this Bo Bollinger band gets lost, I mean, you can see how much room you have. I mean, every single day, I've been kind of highlighting this to the downside over and over and over again. And, and it just it doesn't demonstrate any want or desire to go higher. They, they came out with a couple of PRs and gave basically the middle fingers for anybody who chased them. So if this bottom band gets lost tomorrow, you know, again, why can't you see 16? Why can't you see four? So a lot of room still to the downside there as well. Um, I traded this RBLX. We talked about this RBLX for a couple of days. You guys remember that first initial pivot from a couple of days ago, we talked about the option flow. We talked about the option market dictating. Like somebody always knows something. So RBLX, uh, I caught a piece of this trade as well. Uh, 77 needs to build. 79 is the 52-week highs. And, you know, just like you know it, in the middle of the day, uh, they came out with a PR, blah, 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 Hasbro packed, right? Hasbro packed, it took out the 77, took out the 79, it just exploded uh, all the way to the 8340 area. Again, the options market dictates price action. People are making bets and they're making pets re repeated bets. Usually something is going to happen. And when technicals kind of cross in that in that fire, good things are going to happen. So big move on Roku, take on the way up, NVIDIA, uh, Lowe's on deck on GameStop, Tesla, blah, blah, blah. Let's go. I mean, what else are you going to say? That's that's it was I'm tired now. I wasn't tired when, when I was screaming, let's go. RBLX flyer, uh, fired, blah, blah, you know, flying, da 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 da. Uh, people ask them 780. Yeah, you might get 780 tomorrow. Absolutely. Uh, highest close in this whole formation. So we're set up for tomorrow. You know, we're definitely set up for tomorrow. Um, you know, again, if you're doing your due diligence and you're going through charts, pay attention. It's a broken record, but this is what's working, guys. Pay attention for those 50 minute, com 50 day confirmations. Those are the ones that are lighting up. And if you are getting option flow behind that, you can see how special these things are really getting. So, guys, God bless. Have a great night, everybody. As much as I'm tired, it's only six o'clock here in the East. My son has a basketball game at 845 today. I'm going to be dead by 845. Guys, have a great night, and I'll see you tomorrow.